CataractCoach.com. Learn both horizontal and vertical chop. This senior resident does a great job with case 350 and 351. Now, here we go. Let's watch the first one here. This looks like a uh, fecal probe going in here, chopper going around the equator. That's going to be a horizontal chop. So get a good purchase on the nucleus. Chopper goes around the lens equator, under the anterior capsule, bring the two instruments together and apart, and that's a beautiful horizontal chop. Now, my advice would be to put the phaco probe more in the subincisional space, so just inside that subincisional capsular rexus for the first chop. Now, here again, another clean-looking chop, so beautifully done here. So rotating it around again, you can see that some hydrodelineation was done, so you just have to go around the endonucleus. You don't have to go around the epinuclear shell. And again, splitting it apart, pretty easy. But if that phaco probe is a little bit more in the subincisional, just inside the um, subincisional capsule rexus, you'll get a nicer chop. So here we go, phaco probe embedding it, almost embed, embed, embed. And you're listening for the audio cues. You're listening for your machine to hear the vacuum level go up, like, that means chop right there. So vacuum's high, chop. But if you hear the vacuum comes back down, now you've lost your purchase, you've lost your holding power, it's hard to chop it. So again, rotating these pieces around, now that you've chopped them up, it's easy enough to remove them. And you can even use the same setting. So the nice part with doing this horizontal or vertical chop is the settings I use for chop are essentially the same. In fact, for me, it is the same uh, um, setting as for pieces removal, nucleus removal, quadrant removal. So when you do like a divide and conquer, right, think about it. You're using a different setting to make the grooves and then a different setting to remove the pieces. So the quadrant removal setting is different. But here in chop, the FACO settings to create the chops is gonna be about the same, if not the same, as your quadrant removal setting. So I just have one position on my machine called chop, and that's all I need. So I start every case in chop mode on my machine. Then I click over on my foot pedal, and I go to irrigation aspiration for cortex removal. And then at the end, for viscoelastic removal. So here's the epinuclear shell, grabbing that nice and gently, gentle, 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 you saw our video earlier this week about the epinuclear flip. That's what you want to do here. Flip that thing. But okay, this works too. Just slowly aspirate it. Very nicely done. By the way, it looks like surgeon's left-handed. Looks great. Beautiful job here. In fact, the best is if you can use left hand and right hand equally well. And so this surgeon's doing a beautiful job. I commend you, anonymous young resident. Hey, remember, check out our teaching website, cataractcoach.com. A lot more material than just here on YouTube or Instagram. A lot more. Check it out. It's great stuff for residents, including that free PDF book. You'll learn a lot. Now here, next eye is going to be a vertical chop. So embed the Faker probe. I like its position. Very nice. And then let's see. The chopper is just going to go straight down. Get the chopper in down, straight down, right there, within the rexus even, and then just pull apart. Now you can see why that vertical chop is kind of nice because you don't have to place the chopper underneath the capsule rex's edge. So rotating it around again, get a good purchase. And then this is kind of like chopping wood. You start the chop here with the chopper and then you just propagate it all the way through. So holding onto that and then pulling them apart. Yeah, so a little bit of horizontal action there. So that's why I also talk about combo chop. Combo chop means for me, there's no like big differentiator between vertical chop and horizontal chop. Just, you can do both, you can do anything, just chop it. So combo chop's kind of a combination of both. And so here, now again, it's a little harder to get a good purchase on that little piece. Uh, yeah, that's what I do, I'd rotate to get that bigger piece, buzz in, hold it with the vacuum, Yee, vacuum's high, chop, get the chopper in, go, 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 go. Boom, now the key with chop is you have a finite window of time to accomplish the chop. So I'll do my si noise effects again, my sound effects. If the vacuum goes up, nee, chop. But if you wait, nee, and when it goes back down, you lost your vacuum purchase. So that window of opportunity to get the good chop in is when the vacuum is high. So when it goes, nee, chop. You think about that. Listen, be careful. And you know, listen carefully to the audio clues from your machine. And the reason the machine makes that noise is for you. It doesn't need to make that noise. The machine can be totally silent. Those sound effects are created for you. It's like driving a car. You can look at the tachometer to see the engine RPMs, the revolutions per minute. But even easier, you can just listen. If your engine is going, Wah! you're at 8,000 RPM, shift, right? Whereas if the engine's at a low RPM, you hear it. So this is basically the same audio type clues. 
And so the reason why your machine has these sounds, it's for you, for you to understand what to do here. So it gives you audio clues so your eyes can focus on the surgery here and your ears will let you know, hey, it's time to do the chop. I have high vacuum. So that's why your machine makes that noise, in case you didn't know. And yes, you can adjust the volume setting of that noise to have it more or less. And so, but it's very important if you turn the volume off and operate, I promise it won't be as easy. Again, here's the epinuclear shell. So you can see in both these cases, the resident basically chopped the endonucleus and left the big epinuclear shell intact. And then that's aspirated out here at the end. And a beautiful technique. So if this young resident, by the way, he did a great job. Keep on learning and take, take to advice the, the, you know, in, the instructions we've given you here to become better. But if this young resident can learn shop, I promise you can learn it too. And yes, this week, my videos, I've been talking a little funny because I've got the retainers on my teeth. So if you pick that up, golly, you're smart. And I appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. Check out our teaching website. Remember, cataractcoach.com is an amazing teaching website. So many great resources for residents. There's a 25-part curriculum series, there's a free PDF book, plus the top podcast in all of ophthalmology.